good enough. All right, here's a monitor. All right, the monitor is connected to the motherboard down here in the CPU. All right, now let's say I had to swap out monitors. Let's say this monitor broke, so I bring a new monitor here. All right, what I have to crack open the case of this guy, the CPU, pull it out, get my soldering gun, all right, and take the cable from the monitor and solder that monitor cable to where it needs to connect on the motherboard. Would I be likely to do that? I know we're not hardware people in this class, but as soon as you hear me and soldering iron, you know that nothing good's going to come from it, right? So no, we wouldn't want to do that. Why wouldn't we do that? Why wouldn't I do it? Because it needs to be connected to it. I might as well go in and plug it in, connect it to it. Why not hook those components up that way? What do we do instead, right? There's a jack in the back, and I take the, jack, the, 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 the cable from the monitor and plug it into the jack. What's wrong with doing it the other way, though? Well, if you needed to replace one component. Like yeah. your computer or your monitor. Yeah. You would have to... It makes it harder to sort of plug in a different kind of monitor, right? Um, if the monitor changed or something about the monitor changed, then it's sort of a pain to pull them apart, all right, and hook them back together. What's another reason? Yes? You might fry something else. Yeah, I was going to say, and again, anytime you hear me and soldering iron uh, in the same sentence, you know, one of the potential problems is something's going to get soldered that shouldn't be. All right? My fingers, the uh, sound card, uh, anything else. I'm likely to do damage. All right? So what did the hardware developers do? They developed a very common interface where you can plug this component into that component. You don't have to mess around with the inside of the component. You don't have to wire the inside of one component to the inside of the other component. That's really a great thing. Right, to just be able to plug in. Because then I can swap any monitor out. I don't even have to know anything about hardware or, or soldering irons or anything like that to pull and plug another monitor in here. All right? Now, how does this apply when we're talking about software? Well, it applies like this. It applies like this. Think of this, think of these attributes as the, to use a technical term, the innards of the object, the innards of the class, the guts of the class. All right? Think of these as being the plugins. What do I want to say? The, the, the jacks, the slots, the things that you plug in together. The interfaces. Interface is one of those words that, that means a lot of different things, right? Depending on, on what you're talking. Don't confuse this with graphical user interface. Don't confuse this with GUI. When I, anytime you talk about an interface, you're talking about where two things meet, right? Now, a graphical user interface is where the person meets the application, all right? But when I talk about components interfacing, I'm talking about where one component meets another component, all right? So, the interface between the monitor and the motherboard is the cable and, and the, the jack that you plug it in. So, if this corresponds to the innards of this class, what do we do with hardware? We protect those innards, right? The monitor's in a sealed case. The CPU's in a sealed case. We can crack them open, but ooh, you better be careful when you start doing that, and you better know what you're doing, all right? You know? Some things, if you crack them open, you void the warranty, right? If I were to open this up, there might even be something that shows that it got opened. So the warranty might be voided because who knows what goes on in there. All bets are off once you crack the case open. All right? 
So, again, coming back to software, what does this mean? It means the attributes we are going to protect. We are not going to let the outside world, by outside world I mean another component, we're not going to let the outside world be able to access these directly. All right? Well, wait a minute. I'm going to need to be able to set the cost of the meal, whether it was dining or not, what the level of service was, just like I need to be able to plug in my monitor to the CPU. So if we're not going to be able to touch the innards here, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to provide a little jack for it. So for each of these properties, we're going to have a couple of methods. And those methods are the way which this object can communicate with the rest of the world. And typically, for every attribute, there's going to be two methods. There's going to be a get and a set. A set sets the value of the attribute. It tells this meal, hey, your cost was $29.95. Your level of service was average. And yes, it was dining. All right. The get is where the object reports back the values. So, Emil, what was your cost again? Oh, it was $29.95? Okay. How was the level of service? Oh, it was average? Okay. Um, was it dine-in? Yes, it was dine-in. So, we're not going to allow the outside world to access these attributes. Why not? Because that's the innards of the, of the class. If we start messing with these, we void the warranty, all right? We run the risk of welding things together that shouldn't be together or messing things up. Let me give you an example of why we don't want to do this. We want to control access to those, the values of those attributes, and we don't want outside programs to manipulate them. Cost of a meal. What can I say about the cost of a meal? Well, I can say it has to be more than zero, right? All right. Or maybe it's only zero. All right. Maybe I, got a, I actually got a free meal at Chipotle's the other day because they, the, a week ago they didn't have brown rice, so we had to wait there for like, I don't know, three hours or something like that where they, where they grew the rice and picked it and, and, and then cooked it. All right. <laughs> But at any rate, the, the cost of the meal, we know it can't be negative, all right? I've never yet been in a situation where I've gone anywhere and they've said, well, you know what, here's your meal and, oh, yes, by the way, here's a 10 spot, all right? We're giving you 10 bucks to eat here, all right? Even if the food was crappy, I'd probably go there a lot, right? All right? Now, if I allow the outside world to access the cost of the meal attribute. I could have some program somewhere set the cost of the meal to a negative number. All right? What happens then? Well, all kinds of bad things happen, right? You start harassing the, the, the wait staff for money back for your tip, right? Because they gave excellent service, but because the cost of the meal was negative $100, you're hitting the, 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 the waiter up for a 20. All right? Doesn't make sense, right? In other words, things break. Now, you might say to yourself, all right, and keep in mind that we're thinking bigger than just our little problem here. Well, we have validation on the cost of the meal, so you can enter in a negative number. Okay, that's true. But can you guarantee that every class that's going to access this is going to have the validation in place to make sure that this doesn't get set wrong? And the answer is, of course you can. Because right? once you develop a component, it's out there to be used by anyone. And you may be very diligent and do all the validation correctly, but the next person that comes along, you know, just like you might know how to use a soldering iron and understand the innards of a computer, but the next person that comes along may have no clue and end up butchering your code. All right? So we're going to keep these protected, and we're going to allow access through these only through our get and set methods. What that means is 
I can put validation in the set method, for example, and anyone that tries to set it to a negative amount will get an error. All right, we'll blow up on them. Say, sorry, there's an error. All right, and that's a good thing because, again, that keeps people from getting in. All right, uh, and, and messing things up potentially. And again, think beyond this simple, straightforward, on object, you know, um, you know, number of dependents in a payroll object, uh, any of those kinds of things. If those got set with some goofy number, you know, that could have a big impact on, um, on, uh, on the way an application works. All right. Um, a, you know, a general ledger transaction where the debits didn't add up to the credits. Oh, chaos. All right. So, let's go now and let's start making this class. And then we're going to use it. All right. Now, I know that this is covered in other classes, in other courses. All right, but I do think it's important that we really understand this. And I also think it's important to pay very close attention to these attributes and don't allow access to the, uh, of them directly. So let's go in, let's take what we had from last time, and let's create a custom class to do these things. The nice thing is, is we will not see the sun again for the rest of the year, so we don't have to worry about it being too bright for the screen. Why is it uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays it does this, but on Mondays and Wednesdays it doesn't? That's a stumper. I swear, I was in here last night, and it did not do that. I wonder if this deals with the screen resolution. try to trick it and go back. It's amazing what you can do just by trying to think like the computer and trying to think like this hardware. All right, so let's go and download this. I have fallen behind on grading stuff. I would, I hope to uh, get to that within the next day or so. I do apologize. Didn't I? Oh no, because your, your assignment is not due until 27. So yeah. Um, this is one. Um, this is one thing where it is nice that we have a semester project because if you do, like for example, if you're caught up with all the assignments and I haven't posted the next one yet, then you can start. You know, one thing you can do to fill time is, is start thinking about the semester project. All right, let's see. Example for 920. Q. 
keep in mind as well is there's a lot of ways that you could do this example with the tip calculator. All right. And depending on time, we might talk about some of those. My goal here is not just, again, to get the job done, but to talk about best practices as far as defining your classes and your objects. So, let's look at Visual Studio. to do is create my problem domain class, my, my business class for a meal. So I'll go in here and say file new, file, and I'll pick class here, all right, and I'm going to give it a name that's descriptive. So I'll call it meal, and I'm only getting the code, right? There's no visual aspect to this. You know, there's no UI associated with it. This is a problem level class, so that's where problem domain level class or business class. So this is where the business logic goes. Now keep in mind that everything about meals should be in here. So for example, if I was going to calculate, let's say, the tip amount and the sales tax amount, I want to make two classes, right? Those are just simply two things that a meal can do. Tell me how much of a tip I should leave, tell me how much the tax is. Then again, that's the notion of encapsulation. Everything about a particular kind of thing is in the class for that. So I'll go and click Add. And again, it's telling me do I want to put it in the app code folder? Yes, I do. And we have this, which is a sort of a shell for a class. Let's make this bigger. Now, it gave us by default one method automatically. And that is the method meal. All right. Notice that that method has the same name as the class does. The class is named meal, and the method is called meal. That class is called a constructor. All right. We can put some code in there um, that we want to uh, run whenever we create an instance of this class. That is, whenever we create a meal object, that is a specific uh, uh, object that represents one specific meal, we can put some logic in here, maybe to default some values. So maybe we could default the level of service to average, maybe we could default it to dine-in, and so on. All right? We'll leave this for now, we'll, we'll come back to it later. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define my attributes. All right? So I'm defining my attributes. First attribute is a double. All right. Private double cost. All right. What does the private do? What do you think the private does? Keeps it local within that meal class. Yeah. It means that only the meal class can directly access this attribute. All right? Remember what I had in the board. You know, this is 
since these are the innards of the class, we don't want anyone outside of this class to access them, so we make them private. <coughs> Write this down. Um, October, or wait a minute, it's not October yet, September 25th, 2012, I actually put a comment in my code. All right, so cherish this, this uh, moment. All right, I can then define the other ones, which if I remember right, We'll come back to what the new what what this business means in a second. No, we won't. All right. Uh, and lastly, we had a boolean. and the outside world cannot access them, all right? But of course, right, of course, we're going to want the outside world to connect with this object and be able to set the attributes of it. But we want to very carefully control how other components can access these attributes. So we're going to write get and set methods. These get and set methods, what they will do is they will allow us to set those attributes, but then we can have any sort of validation or error checking or anything like that that we need. All right? So I'm going to make, for each attribute, a get method and a set method. So public void set cost I'll do this one We'll talk about it, and then I'll just clone it for the other, other two. Okay. Get and set methods. world. 
So, we have the, so the object has to be able to send back the attributes because someone might ask this, what the cost of the meal is. Well, what this function is going to do, what the get function does is it's going to return the cost. All right? So, the outside world can access this attribute, but it has to use the set and get to access it. The set will give it a value, the get will get the value, and, this, you know, and allow someone to do something with it. All right, we're going to need the same thing for service. So now, we haven't really done any processing logic. We've just done our getters and setters so that we can, we can access those and, um, and, and, and give values to them. All right. Now, I'm going to need a calculate tip function. All right. So, I'm going to create it public, right, because the outside world needs to be able to ask what the tip is. I'm going to declare a double and because that's what it's returning. And I'm going to create my calculate tip method. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this code. Actually, I may dine in a string. So let's go and change that to, to be a string. It's not a Boolean. And I'm just going to change this code to use the instance variables. 